I hope everyone's had a wonderful conference so far. It's not over yet. Well, I thought nothing to be as daunting as speaking in the august surroundings of the House of Lords. How wrong I was. What a fantastic and fitting venue to celebrate the collective brain power gathered here in Sheffield tonight, which easily rivals the cerebral excellence of the House of Lords. It means so much to me, and I'm sure to all those of us who are attending OI 2022 and who live with OI, that your intellect, your expertise, your energy are all focused with laser like precision on making our lives easier. So thank you so much for all that you do. Truth is, I don't actually suffer from brittle bones. I live with it. And thanks to your work, I'm also that of someone who, though not here in person, is most definitely here in spirit. I live my life to the full. That someone left me a legacy which grows richer the older I become. His name is Hamas Weissel, and he was my orthopedic surgeon practically from birth to the age of 13. By cruel coincidence, he was also a teenager when in 1939 he fled the virulent, violent, and ultimately murderous anti Semitic racism of the Nazis. He escaped just on the last train out of Prague before the Nazis closed the borders. None of his family members who remained survived the Holocaust. By chance, his life was saved by the Kinder transport. As a result, he went on to transform my life chances. Like me, he could never have envisaged the line of percent of the Lords at the age of 34. After a career campaigning for charities like the Royal British Legion, he knew that I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. Like many with no eye, I was born with a broken leg. I wrote to Hans Weisel after his retirement in 1992 to thank him for his perfectionist care which meant that despite my having had around 50 fractures and after a childhood spent largely in the hospital bed, I was walking, admittedly with cowardice, and able to live independently and attend university. With typical modesty, he replied, I was most touched by your note of thanks for whatever I tried to do. However, I am convinced that whatever the surgeon does, it is the patient who makes it work or not. I think that may have been a backhanded compliment to my sheer bloody mindedness. <laughs> I don't know whether the geneticists here would agree but it does seem to be quite a common trait of people with OI, as if it were built into our DNA. And in my case, it was just as well, because as far as I'm concerned, you know it, I've 
Mandela being there and absolutely hated the two sets. Fractures galore, better their imagination as a young adult, and as recently as this journey, I have my left leg rebuilt by the brilliant Marcus Banks and his colleague Christian Smith at Dyer's in London. The pain when I came round and for the next five weeks was unreal. But it was worth it. Thanks to them, my mobility and my quality of life have been transformed. But also, thanks to my old surgeon, Hammond Spicer, because it was a fact that he had rotted my femur 40 days earlier, which meant that in 2022, the femur was straight enough for the rod to be removed and replaced with a plate the entire length of the femur, so that they could then replace the hip, all in the same operation and all remarkably without fracturing the bed. Now you may be thinking, you may not be, but that's quite an inspiring story. But isn't that unusual? I don't know. You deal with individuals living with OI and their families day in, day out. You may find us inspiring. But for me, inspiration works both ways. Your dedication, so evident at all the wonderful presentations and posters given throughout OI 2022, is my inspiration. Hannes Weissel's story and his example inspire me to do more, to give more, and to ask myself this question. It's a question I imagine is common to all of us tonight, and indeed one we probably asked ourselves throughout our career. It's not just about what will I take away from OI 2022. It's also the crucial bigger picture question. How does one measure the impact of what each of us does? Now, that may not be a question Professor Bishop has to worry about, because as this terrific conference comes to an end tomorrow, there could be no doubt what a phenomenal impact he has made. So thank you so much, Matt, for all that you have done here in Sheffield and indeed around the world through your clinical practice in leading cutting edge research and perhaps most importantly for me, in the name of children and young people with bone conditions like our own, right, to mitigate its impact, live a full life and realise their potential. The effective transition from the excellent childhood services we've done so much to develop to effective care and support for adults is crucial. And I know it's a burning issue for the Brittle Bone Society and indeed for all of us with OI and involved in supporting people with OI and their families. But what about the rest of us? How do we measure impact? Because it's a question that I would suggest has never been more important in an age when the impact we make in our careers, in particular, is so interwoven with our sense of self-worth. 
with our innate desire to do good. It reminds me, in this suitably ecclesiastical setting, of the words of Psalm 37. Trust in the Lord and do good, and you will live in the land and be secure. Regardless of whether one has a religious faith, knowing that they are doing good is so important to a sense of purpose, of security, and indeed our mental well-being. So my answer is this. Be inspired by the progress you're making in care in research, in collaboration. And I hope to take away from OI 2022 what I would call the three C's, new, perhaps deeper, contacts, a stronger understanding of the wider context in which your world is changing lives. And finally, a real sense of community and partnership. But also be proud of both the immediate and almost immeasurable impact of what you do. In this increasingly fast and pressurised world, that is so easy to lose sight of. It's so easy to underestimate the worth, the value of what you are about, to assume you are insignificant, that your contribution doesn't really matter, that you are not making a difference to believe that you are not helping to build a better, more equal world. Don't, because that is exactly what you are doing and what needs to be done. I was once criticised by a French assist dog at school. He said to me, do you know what your problem is, Kevin? You're a dreamer. Little did you know that it was a small boy's capacity to dream beyond his hospital bed that kept him sane for the months on end as he lay in traction. That always dreaming has been <laughs> between fighting on and giving up. And look where it's done. Giving the after dinner speech for OI 2022. All of us need to dream, to think big, to look beyond. Ultimately, that is surely the point the whole point of our being together here in Sheffield. So thank you for the impact you make and the good that you do. And please, don't stop. <laughs>